Hi, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in to November's selection of books for Librarians Recommend. And this is where your Hudson librarians are giving their best book recommendations on a specific theme. And for this month, November, we're focusing on our personal versions of holiday books. So whether that's, um, you know, people have different holidays celebrate in different ways and we wanna each bring something unique to the table. And I was nominated to start. So I am gonna start with my holiday book that I have to reread every single year. And it is Scarlet Feather by Maeve Vinci. Just gonna do a little close up. Uh, Maeve Vinci is an Irish author. Her book, Circle of Friends, was made into a movie. Some of you might recognize that as the movie. It's an older book, Scarlet Feather is, um, but I just love it. It makes me happy every time I read it. It's witty, it's funny, it's just, it feels like coming home. And that's what I think Maeve Binchy does so well. She was an amazing storyteller. She captures the quirks of people beautifully, um, their weaknesses, their strengths, and she just weaves them together so seamlessly. And so for me, every year, like I said, when I reread this book, it just makes me happy. And it's also perfect for the holidays because, slight spoiler, there is a wonderful Christmas surprise at the end of the book that just, um, I just look forward to it every year. It's kind of my personal tradition. So that is my recommendation for a holiday book that will put you in the mood to celebrate. Again, it's called Scarlet Feather by Maeve Binchy. It will also uh, fuel your appetite because it features a catering company in Ireland. And I don't know, for those of you who don't know, I'm a foodie. I love food. I love to read about food, cook food, eat food. So please enjoy the book. And let's go to Joseph next. All right. So my interpretation of what I'm thankful for this holiday season as I'm stealing from a coworker of mine in book selections. Um, is The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. So this is a book that I'm personally just glad exists and I'm extremely happy that I happened to stumble across it randomly um, because I have never heard anyone mention this book ever and it absolutely breaks my heart because in my opinion, this is kind of a a monumental accomplishment in storytelling. And, you know, when people say there's nothing new under the sun these days, or um, there's only like X number of stories, I always think of this book now because I have never read anything like it. And I have a hard time trying to explain what it is because it mixes literally everything together. <laughs> like every genre I can think of plays a significant role in this book. The pitch that I would try to give is that it takes sort of a classical Greek mythology type like God and implement like plants them into our modern world. And it follows a couple of people who are essentially raised by that God as like sort of the modern equivalent of demigods like you might find in Greek myths or Norse myths, etc. And seeing how it plays out in this book, this is probably the only book I've read in at least a decade where I truly did not know where the story was going at any point. I swear every couple of pages, the rug was pulled out from under me entirely. And while normally that's frustrating, this book, every time it happened, which again was very frequently, it pulled me in and it got me excited and invested in a way that very, very few books ever have. If you're looking for something different, something new, or if you're really interested in like story structure and pacing and like the mechanical side, 
I cannot recommend this book highly enough. The only thing I can think of, only reason you may not want to read this book, or at least I would not highly suggest you give it a try, is if you really don't like anything vaguely fantastical, you don't like mythology, you don't like anything that isn't firmly rooted in this world, or if you are not a fan of, I don't want to say terribly graphic because this isn't like a horribly gruesome book or anything like that, but it does touch on some fairly mature and dark themes. So if you're not in the mood for that, you don't care for it, you know, probably give it a pass. But if you can put up with darkness, put up with weird stuff, put up with something you've never seen before, I highly recommend giving that a try. So that's, again, The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. And I'm going to pass it off to Sarah. Okay. Well, I, you know, took, took this month's theme as thinking about the holidays and thinking about uh, family. And so I started thinking about my family and my extended family and my friends. And the book that really came to mind is Odd Fellows Orphanage. And um, the, this is just a really fun book. It's by Emily Winfield Martin. I've read it to my kids. It, you will find it in the juvenile section. Um, but we, um, we moved to Hudson a couple of years ago and um, a couple of summers ago, we went back to Pella, Iowa, where we used to live and got together with a friend and she uh, recommended this book to us. She said that they read it every night before bed. And, um, and the reason why she recommended it to us is one of the characters names is Delia, which is both my daughter's name and my grandma's name. And so we had to get the book and, um, and read it. And it's just a quick read. Um, there's a picture at the beginning of every chapter and it, it's like a portrait drawn about a character, then it gives you a little bit of information about the character, and then it goes into a short chapter um, about all of the kids and the people living and working at this orphanage. It's completely fictional. One of the characters is an onion, another character is a porcupine, um, but it's, it's a book that I really love because when I sat down to read it with, to my kids, um, the, the chapters are super short and they kind of stop. They kind of want bring you into the next, but they kind of stop. And so it was great for reading a chapter or two at bedtime, but my kids are always like, no, read more. We have to find out what happens. And so I really, it, it makes me think of my family. It makes me think of family. And it shows you how um, these kids that were ripped out of their families due to bad circumstances, were brought into and created another family. And so it's just a really fun, um, really fun book. Uh, after reading that, we had to get for our kids Snow and Rose, which is another one by Emily Winfield Martin. Also really good um, about not your typical family. It's all based on fairy tales and, and changing fairy tales. And so they're both really fun books that I would recommend. And now I pass it off to Chris. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Well, we've all kind of gone in different directions with this theme, so I will not disappoint as well. Uh, I've, I've gone in a very different direction, but uh, in thinking about the theme, I was thinking of a book I'm thankful for, and there's a couple different reasons. So uh, I've finished uh, Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey, which is the book series that the um, Amazon Prime series, The Expanse, is based on. So uh, I'm very thankful for the books, and I'm also thankful that uh, season five of The Expanse is starting next month, uh, and I get to binge watch that series. So I've taken the approach, I don't know about you, but when there's a book series, I tend to drag my feet a little bit because if I get into it, and I'd heard very good things about it, and people recommended it to me, they've been reading it, I want to kind of blow through them all at my own pace, and, and I'm not good at waiting two years you know, for the next book. So this series uh, started in 2011. And uh, it's an eight book series. And I heard they're uh, gonna capstone it with the final ninth book um, next year, is coming out next year. So it was Leviathan Wakes and the ninth book will be Leviathan Falls. So when I heard that, I'm like, okay, and now I'm ready. So I've been diving into the book. So I'm actually on the uh, second book in the series, Caliban's War. 
And interestingly, uh, James S.A. Corey is a pen name. Um, it's for two writers that are working on the books. It's Daniel Abraham and Ty uh, Frank. And so those are the writers uh, under the pen name and they have an interesting backstory. They worked on the uh, Game of Thrones series with uh, George R.R. R. Martin's books. They were helping adapt them for the series for HBO. So kind of off of that, it's kind of almost that uh, Game of Thrones, for those of you that have seen that or read the R.R. Uh, R. Martin books, it's that kind of epic uh, space soap opera uh, on a grand scale. So, and it's the science fiction. I'm very picky on science fiction, but I was very excited for this series because uh, if you've read any science fiction, it's in the vein of that kind of Andy Weir, like the Martian or Artemis or Arthur C. Clarke, uh, 2001, uh, things like that, where it's a, almost a science fact, you know, looking in the future at what what could happen in kind of a factual grounding, not transporters or warp drive or these kind of more fantastical things, but it, you're, you're progressing a few hundred years in the future for the timeline of the story. And you could see how these things could be happening in a couple hundred years. We have uh, engineers that are mining ice out in Saturn's rings to bring it for drinking water to the colonies on Mars and to the colonies uh, you know, elsewhere that are expanding throughout the solar system. And we're mining asteroids and bringing the precious metals back for uh, fabrication on the earth and on the moon and Mars and, and their settlements kind of scattered throughout the, the inner solar system now. So I like it in that it, it's uh, dealing with some more science fact kind of based where, where you can see this happening and not so fantastical. But the, the series is, uh, on Amazon Prime, and I like the other thing they're doing in the structure, one season of the series is going off of one book. So when you're reading them, uh, as I'm kind of going through it, I'm seeing that the season finale ended, you know, at the end of the book, and then you kind of pick up a new season with a new book, and then all those episodes will be covering, you know, the, the arc in that book. So I kind of like that structure uh, for it too. So I'm reading them in the off seasons and then watching the seasons as they're going. But uh, they're also expanding it. There's graphic novels and a board game. And I like that they're uh, doing novellas and short stories. They're kind of really expanding ways people can access the material or interact with it. So uh, I'm thankful for that. And so that was why that was my pick. I thought I'd share with you all for that. So back to you, Madeline. Thank you all so much. Let's show our books one more time. Just to give a close up. So I think that's a, certainly some good options. Um, please, as always in the comments, let us know, what are you reading over the holidays? What book are you most thankful for? Let us know if there's a theme you'd like us to touch on in the months to come. And thank you so much for tuning in.